Hi, I'm Gary Dawson. I'd like to share with you a process for creating a simple bezel in Rhino 6 around an unusually shaped gemstone. The gemstone that we're going to be using today is a gel verisite I took a photograph of earlier in the day with my cell phone. Without sacrificing focus, I got as close to it as I could on a, on a contrasting surface. And we're going to bring it in to the top viewport by using the command line picture and we're going to find this gel verisite uh, right here where I left it. We're going to click and drag it and click again into the top viewport. Now before we go any farther we're going to select this picture that I just drug in and we're going to place it on a picture layer that I've already created um, and then we're going to lock that layer and that's going to be fairly important uh, in just a second here when we expand the top viewport and we create our control point curve I'm going to take off grid snap and ortho and this control point curve I'll try and make as simply as possible as I can around the gym using as few control points points as I possibly can to get to be true to the perimeter of the gym um, using less control points is better in every circumstance because it creates cleaner surfaces later on when we begin to process this. Okay, I'm going to select this which highlights the control points. I'll select a control point and using the window pane I can now move the, con uh, the control point curve into the proper position to accomplish what I want it to do which is uh, go around uh, the perimeter of this gemstone and follow the perimeter as closely as possible. Now if I haven't, um, if I can't get a really good job with a few control point uh, control points that I created in this curve, I may need to go back in and add another control point which is a simple process but I don't think I'm going to need to here. It looks like this is going to work just fine with a number of, oh, well, maybe. I don't like how there's a little bit of distance here and maybe a little bit of distance there that I'm not crazy about. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I may add one or two control points by going to the command line, insert control point, select the curve, because we're going to be putting the control points on this curve, and I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one here. All right. And then hit enter. And then I can actually grab two of these at once by surrounding them with the um, just just tracing around them with the cursor. And now I think I'm going to be a little happier with this. I'm not sure what's going on with this one. I'm not crazy about it. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to call that good. I'm going to move this one up just a hair here. I'm going to call that good. And now we can hide this layer. And I'm going to move the control point curve, turning grid snap back on to the center of my um, top viewport. And now we're going to work on scaling this. Now you could create reference lines. There's a lot of ways to get there, but there's a really quick way we can do it in Rhino. And uh, transform scale 2D. Hit enter to make 0, 0 your, uh, your scale factor first reference point. And then, uh, and then I'm going to turn on ortho. I already have quad selected here. And by using tab with ortho on, you can see how the line wants to seek uh, the quad. And if I click on this now, you can see how I can manually scale this thing, but I can also scale it to a specific dimension. Now, if, um, if I just begin typing in here, oh, I happen to know, by the way, that the gemstone measures from top to bottom precisely 24.07 millimeters. So I can type that number, 0 0.04, 
24.07 in here. And you can see what I have, actually, I've created, this is 24.07 from this part to the top. So that's not exactly what we wanted to do. Let me, let me demonstrate how to, how to correct that. We're going to go back to our original model here. We're going to right click to repeat this, the last command. We're going to select uh, zero, 00 point as our base point. And then we're going to hit tab here. And now, I'm going to, instead of hitting enter after I type in 24.07, I'm going to go slash 2, which Rhino does math. So it will divide that 24.07 by 2 and give us uh, half that distance from the 0, 0 position up to the top of the gym. If I hit enter now, we can check our dimensions. Um, by hitting the quad mark here, tab, quad mark here, and 24.07. There's another way, oops, I was going to delete that. There's another way to do that too, distance, quad, tab, quad, and we can see up here distance is given as 24.07. I guess the benefit to that is that we don't have to delete it when we're done. I kind of like pulling out the dimensions though, that's fun. Alright, so now we have our control point curve that is scaled correctly for the gemstone. It should fit pretty good. We're going to next curve um, offset and we're going to offset to the outside here 0.5 millimeters and this will define the thickness of our bezel once we've completed um, our simple bezel. We're going to offset again by right clicking which repeats the last command. I'm going to change the distance though to 1.4 millimeters and click to the inside of my original control point curve. Now I have three curves that I can highlight by dragging right to left across them. Uh, I can oops, I can go into the front viewpoint for front viewport click on the extrusion button that is new in Rhino 6. Uh, the number 6 is already typed in there because that's how far uh, up I want to extrude these curves into surfaces. So I'll hit enter and you can see if we just check this we can see what it looks like in perspective viewport. See we have three surfaces that are just surfaces not yet solids. They're not poly surfaces. But I'm going to go ahead and move these curves now onto a curve layer that I created earlier and get them out of the way. Now we can select all three of these and using an alias that I created earlier on CA enter oops, I, uh, we go CA enter it invokes the command that you can find under solid cap planar holes. It does this using an alias. I won't go into too much detail about aliases, but find out about them. Make some of your own and use them because they're a huge time saver. I wish I'd have known about aliases in my own earlier in my own uh, Rhino learning curve. So now we can select the innermost poly surface. It's going to become a cutter uh, for the open back bezel that we're going to create in this simple bezel process and we're going to move it, uh, extend it past both north and south here of this, these other two poly surfaces. Now we'll select the next one out, which is the original control point curve, the surface created by that original curve that goes right around the gym zone. This is going to cut away the rest of the, uh, this is going to become a cutter in a minute. Uh, I can touch the up arrow here, type in one millimeter and automatically move it up one millimeter. Now these these two poly surfaces are going to be used as cutters to cut away uh, everything that we don't need in this outer surface and then that will become our finished bezel. So we're going to put these on another layer. Um, for some reason I put my cutters on a white layer all the time. It just seems logical to me. So we'll do a boolean difference. We'll touch this as the poly surface um, to extract from or subtract from, hit enter, and we're going to use these other two surfaces as the poly surfaces to extract with, and we will hit enter. And now if we just hide those cutter layers, we can see here our finished bezel. 
Now this could be integrated into a ring or made into a pendant, whatever you want to do with it next. Beyond the scope of this simple video tutorial, um, I'll just do one more thing. We'll select this, select the object, material. We'll, um, we'll make a new material out of it. Actually, I've created one before, uh, apparently. Let's go ahead and use that. It's a metal gold color. And now if we render this, we can see, oh, it looks like I put a, it looks like I put a, a bump. Let's look at this. Oh yeah, I put a bump texture of leather on it. Um, I did that actually earlier on because it's um, a lot of times distressed by design is kind of this cool contemporary thing that a lot of people like in simple jewelry. It's a style that's become popular. But if you don't want that, we can simply remove the bump texture here and we have the rendered object. Thanks for watching this today. It's been fun. And uh, I hope I get to see you again sometime soon. Again, I'm Gary Dawson. Gary Dawson Designs is my website. And I'll look forward to coming to you in future videos.